On this occasion, I welcome you all in the vertical summit by industry interaction cell of IM Kui Code. Today, we are delighted to have with us Mr. Gunjan Shah, VP, Sales and Bread Business for Britannia. Mr. Gunjan Shah comes with an extensive experience of over 17 years in the field of sales, marketing, program management, supply chain, and international business. He joined Britannia's sales function in the year 2007. He has recently moved into this role of the head of sales and bread business earlier this year and is already well on his way into making transformational reforms within the sales structure. In his previous stint as the head of the international business arm of Britannia, the top line growth and bottom line operating margin growth showed remarkable results. The feather in the cap was that Britannia became for the first time the second largest player in the biscuits. Prior to joining Britannia, he worked with Motorola as regional sales manager. He also worked with Asian Paints and Bennett Coleman and Company. He did his graduation in engineering from VJTI, Mumbai, and PGDM from IM Calcutta. An avid reader, he's also a traveling and sports enthusiast. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Gunjan Shah. Have you faced problems in people whenever you have such sessions in terms of either the PPT not working or the mic not working or something like that? This is really smooth, I mean, huh? lovely. <coughs> I don't have too many slides. Huh? Uh, so how many of you all are from the first year? Obviously, I'm assuming all of you are from IMK. No? How many are outside IMK? Oh, lovely. And which institute is this? Pardon? National Institute of Technology. Okay. And that group? Pardon? Aligarh Muslim University. Okay. And you all are based in Calicut? Okay. All right. Great. So, welcome to you all on behalf of IMK. Right. Okay. So, how many of you all are from the first year? Oh, that's a wrong question to ask. Yeah. How many of you all are not from the first year? Okay. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay. All right. Right. And uh, how many of you all have had uh, work experience more than 24 months prior to coming year? Wow, that's much larger than when I went through it, right? So someone was telling me that even IMK has gone through this uh, profile change over the last two, three years, right? So, no, good, good, good to hear that. Because actually when, you know, there's, there's exactly, I think about 20 years back, I was sitting in one of those chairs, right? And uh, uh, that time I remember, I think it was a dilemma. Right, so when I had finished my engineering and I had moved, uh, I had the opportunity to either take a job or uh, uh, join an MBA course, right, a postgraduate course. And the option was whether to do it immediately or should I do it after a gap, take some work experience, right. Uh, and that time IT was a big flavor, right, so I had done computer engineering. I was not too interested in computers, but I had a great job offer in hand at that point in time paying some 10,000 rupees a month, right, and which was a fortune at that point in time. Right? So it was very uh, tempting for me to take up that job offer, right. So money in hand is obviously, right, is, is very, very lucrative, especially at that stage in your life, yeah. But somehow for some quirky reason, I managed to get into some wait list and I landed up at, uh, at, uh, at the institute, I am Calcutta, right? And I thought that, you know, I don't know whether I'll make it again. So let's take this up. We'll take up the job offer later. Yeah, <coughs> great. So uh, as I said, I don't have too many slides, right? So I like to do this session a little differently, right? The first thing is that I'm down here, right? Uh, more importantly, uh, so tell me, you know, how many of you all must be here? This must be what, about 150 people? More than 200. About 200 people, okay, great. So if, you know, at least if some of you all can tell me what do you all expect from the session? So you heard my profile, right? So I mean, he obviously 
blew it up a little and some of it obviously was passed on by my office itself, right? But broadly, I have basically uh, worked across a few organizations in different industries. So a good part of my initial career was in paints. Then after that, I was there for a few years in uh, the telecom business, which was Motorola, which is defunct now as a company, right? It's been sold twice over. And for the last uh, almost nine years plus, I have been in Britannia, right? And uh, I've been through various gamut of roles and stuff on that front. Uh, you have also heard about my whatever educational background. I spoke a little about it. So what do you all expect from this session? What do you all want to know? Someone can raise their hands and say. Or is this class participation? Has been someone been forced to bring out, bring you all down here? Is there attendance happening? Okay, chalo, good. Uh, just mention your name also, just for the courtesy of it. Sir, uh, you would like to know uh, growth in marketing as career. Growth in marketing as a career. Okay, all right. Can someone just help me note down because we don't have a chart. So at the end of whatever time that I have been given, we'll check whether we have done all the answers. Anything else? Yeah. Just say your name. I missed your name. Sorry. Sir, this is Vineet. Vineet. Okay. Yeah. Sir, Kunal. Kunal. Yeah. What are the challenges I have faced while in sales and marketing through my career? Okay, great. That's a nice question. I can definitely answer that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My name is Uday Kumar. Uh -huh. uh, as you joined as a fresher when during you were college, I, mean, uh -huh. I have a work ex of almost 40 months, 48 months. Right. So, what? How better or how well I can use these two years of my MBA education? to land up in a, and have a good career in marketing or so what what advice would you give and how best I can use this? So I am looking forward to get some piece of advice from this session. That's a very convoluted question, but if I understand it right, put bluntly what you're saying is how can I leverage those four years of my work ex to get a better job offer? And also how best I can make use of these two years? Two years within the, the campus? Institute, yeah. Okay. All right. So there are two different questions actually. The second question applies to everyone. The first one, you will need a customized reply. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And how to What's your name? Ayushri. Ayushri. How do you? Uh, how do you identify that marketing is the right career for you, and you want me to answer it? Suits what kind of a person? Okay, that's not a bad question. All right, someone else had raised their hands here. How difficult is it Name? to uh, Shilpa? Shilpa. Okay. Yeah. How difficult is it to switch between industries like telecom and you had like telecom then Britannia? So how was it? Uh, how the change was? Oh, I had paints before that. Actually, paints was a very long stint. Okay, that's a nice question. Okay, switching between industries and what happens? Oh, someone's noting down. Eh? I'll forget otherwise. Oh, lovely. Is putting up on the board? Yeah. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Cool. So, how integrated is sales and marketing? How are they? How different are they? Or are they any different? Okay, that's a nice question. Yeah. That you are not able to. That is very difficult to. Difficult for you to tackle. Let's put it this way, what are the new, so challenges anyways, I think someone talked about, right? Uh, so the point is, what you're saying is, what are the new trends in the field of sales and marketing in FMCG, I'm assuming that's what you're asking, yeah? Okay, all right. Uh, uh, my name is Akshay. Where is that? Uh, Akshay, uh, so my question is, uh, what are the challenges that are coming up in this industry particularly? And uh, Britannia's industry? Yes. So food industry? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, my name is Bhumika. Uh, your hand somewhere? Yeah. Uh. So, my name is Bhumika. So, sir, we have heard that uh, freshers are preferred as compared to work experience people in marketing. And it's said that they don't have a biased view or something. So, I'm not really able to understand that. That Why is it that freshers are, you know, preferred? Or actually, is it true or not? Okay. All right. Are freshers preferred? And if so, why? Uh, 
Hello, sir. I'm Nikhila. So generally, people say that you have to uh, first get into sales and only then you can excel in marketing. So how important it is to start your career with sales and then uh, if you want to excel in marketing? Okay, great. So I'll, 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 I'll stop here, right? Huh? <laughs> Obviously, you have a lot of questions and I have lots of time tonight, right? So from my side, there's no bar. Obviously, I don't know whether you all have a time limit or something, right? So, uh, so, you know, if you all have, and I guess there were a couple of other hands somewhere, right? Please uh, keep your questions, note them down, right? We'll try and, you know, cover while answering some of these questions and, you know, while I try and go through stuff, right? You will see some of the answers and it will trigger, more importantly, many more questions, right? So, uh, we'll catch hold of the same question session and that time I'll try and do it, you know, one by one. So, I'll try and answer questions directly. So, uh, uh, you know, while we go back to these questions, right, uh, just to quickly tell you, right, so uh, if you can just go to that first slide that was there. So we'll come back to your question. They are not lost. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> so since I had put a lot of effort to put down some five lines, right, so I'll, I'll go through those five lines before we start hitting your questions. Yeah. Just go to that, uh, there was a slide, right? Huh. Okay, so I, there are some of the questions are in this area. So, uh, somewhere you'll have to, you'll have to give me credit. So, that was something that I anticipated in some form, right? And one of the reasons is that uh, this is not my first campus lecture talk specifically you know, on this area, right? So, I've done it. I have not come to Cozy Code, right? In fact, this is my first visit to uh, your campus here. I have been to some other campuses uh, across the country and over the last few years and it's been a rewarding experience personally from my side itself right so i besides whatever you all or the students in those lectures would have found out as value i myself found value in terms of interacting with many of you all and that's why i would like this to be much more interactive which is one of the reasons i didn't want to go onto that podium out there right and while we are talking right i'll look forward to you interrupting me anywhere anytime you feel you want to interject with a question you want to feel you want a clarity on something, uh, more than happy, right? As I said, I am looking forward to this being a rewarding experience for me. And not only this hour that I'll spend out here or the time that I'll spend here in this lecture room, but also hopefully in the evening, I'll try and get into acquaint with some of you all. Because uh, I firmly believe and, uh, you know, I have left campus uh, formally, you know, two decades back, right? Uh, I've obviously aged, right? And what does happen? What does happen when you get into the rut of life? Right? I've obviously got married. Now I've got kids, right? Uh, I've got larger roles and responsibilities, right? They come with their own, uh, you know, how do you say, encumbrances and luxuries, etc. Right? What does happen is that you start, you know, your mind starts becoming insulated slowly. Right. You stop looking at things differently. You stop looking at things, uh, you know, how the world is changing around you. That does happen, right? Uh, and it's very important that if you don't try and keep yourself, you know, how do you say, pull yourself out of the rut once in a while, right? Uh, it's very, very easy that the world will change so fast, you will be left behind. So that's more from my perspective. Doesn't apply to you all right now. Right, because you all are the ones who are going to change the world. Right? Uh, but keep this in mind. Right? The world will keep changing. It's, keep, it's changing even faster nowadays. Right? And more so in the future. So two decades down the line, right, it would have, the world would have changed in all ways and means. Whether it be in terms of, you know, uh, how do you say, technology, practices, culture, right? uh, the way you look at things, etc. Much, much, much more than it would have changed the last two decades. And that's why it's important. And for me personally, it's something that's value adding. So it's not as if I'm doing a favor by coming here. I've come here for my own selfish reason. Right? That's what I basically wanted to say. Okay, great. Uh, the FMCG life, right? Uh, so I tried to put down some things that I wanted to, you know, that will trigger thoughts in terms of me talking to you all about it. And in the way or during that, I'll try and answer some of the questions. Right, and while uh, we can always dial back to those questions and some others that you will have while I talk or afterwards. So, uh, what is full form of FMCG? Oh, great. 
professors are doing a good job. Yeah. Okay. So fast moving consumer goods. Right. Uh, how is it different from consumer durables? Pardon? Loudly. Yeah. Someone raise their hands. So no murmuring. Huh? as compared to durables. They are consumed very quickly as compared to durables. Uh, for example, the durables have a minimum life of one year and uh, the, consu uh, the, uh, the consumer goods uh, have uh, less than one. Have less than one year. Okay. So the life cycle is faster. What else? Consumers uh, come again and again uh, for FMCG products, so we need to market our product in such a way. Uh, for dur cons cons consumer durable products, uh, they are expected to come only once. Like that. Same point actually, in a way, right? So life cycle. What else? Yeah, someone's raised their hand there. Yeah? Not much thought is put on when, uh, when we buy the product. Not much thought is put on when we buy the product. You are disrespecting millions of consumers. <laughs> uh, but put differently, I think the spirit of what he is trying to say is that its consumer durables are far more planned a purchase. Right, okay? When you go to buy a phone or you go to buy a TV, you are going to do a lot of research. Right? You will compare features, compare prices, look around in five shops. Right? Why do you do all that effort? No, 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 no murmuring, please. Huh? The cost factor is greater than that. Please. The price, so basically a big difference that is there is in terms of unit price, right? You will invariably see the FMCG products have a far lower unit price compared to a durable product. And there have been times wherein, you know, uh, categories have transitioned across these two, right? When, when either through technology or through innovation in some other form, right? People have managed to cross that unit price barrier. So one of the best examples, right, is basically, uh, you know, uh, uh, in a way mobile phones, right? They've changed life cycle, they've changed price, right? Unit price has suddenly changed dramatically. And that suddenly made the entire thing a very different ball game. And now it's more, in a way, tried to straddle that spectrum from a low unit price, small life cycle to a high unit price and a high life cycle, right? And that somewhere has tried to move towards this and which is why that thing exploded out of shape, right? And which is what you saw in India in a way and we are seeing it much more and now in the smartphones and all of that stuff, right? But anyway, so uh, one of the other things that determines because of all these differences, right? A big thing that's a difference. Hmm. Uh, so how would you say, uh, is, is paints a consumer durable or a FMCG? It's a durable, yeah. It's a it's a reasonably planned purchase. It's got a long life cycle, reasonably long, at least one and a half two years, right? At least, right? And it's uh, it's got a high price to it, relative to an FMCG product, yeah. Right. So uh, so I'll tell you an example of that, right? How life will be different in FMCG is that uh, paints in India is sold in about. Uh, give or take a few thousand, is sold in about 70,000 outlets across India. Across the whole nooks and corners of India, is sold in about 70,000 outlets. Can you guess how many outlets does a Britannia get sold? I know murmurs. Huh? Pardon? So 70,000 outlets is what I quoted as paints, right? So how many outlets does Britannia get sold? Uh, around a million at least. Million, okay. Anyone wants to take a bet lower or higher? Half a million? So 500,000 outlets, right, compared to 70,000 of paints, okay. Anyone else? Do you all have a canteen in this campus? Do you see Britannia products? You do? How many canteens or how many outlets would be there in this campus? Three, two, one, three, right. Most probably there will be every residential block having one small little stall somewhere. Yeah? So three outlets. How many paint outlets in this campus? Zero. Right. It is sold in about, uh, 
about 6 million outlets across India, that is 60 lakhs right compared to 70,000. So, what does that mean in terms of sales and marketing? Pardon? No, so what does it mean in terms of how you go about trying to do sales and marketing? <coughs> In the case of? In the case of FNCG products. In the case of FNCG products? Like, uh, Does anyone disagree? Yeah, why do you disagree? It will be more in the case of durables. Okay. Huh? Why? Uh, no murmur. Because of the differentiability in the product. Because in durable, you will, you will have a like more differentiation, more but in FMC, like if you want to uh, take a biscuit, you uh. can take a uh, biscuit from Britannia company or some similar kind of product you can get in the from the other company. Hmm. So it will hardly make a difference. But if a uh, guy is committed to one company, so how many times have you gone to an outlet and asked, ki, uh, you know? Tell me which is the best toothpaste you have. How many of you all have gone and asked in your entire life till now? Or have you gone with a predetermined thing, ki mere ko aaj, you know, I have seen this ad, I want to try out this close-up fellow, or I want to try out this whatever, aajkal wo dant kanti chal raha hai, I want to try that hello out. Or whatever else, right, there is some new Colgate gel, so I want to try that out, right. Is that the way we purchase that? So, you go to that outlet and say give me one Colgate gel or give me one close up, <coughs> hmm? right. How many times, but in case let us say for example, you are going to buy a TV, you are more likely to go and ask that outlet, right, which is the best TV, right, okay my friends got a Sony, right, so show me the Sony versions, what are the prices, then simultaneously you will see that while seeing that and discussing that there will be five other brands that you will get to see. Then you will ask you why is this cheaper, why is this costlier, there will be various models within the same brand, right. So, the amount of engagement and interaction that is there in a durable, because it is a high life cycle, because it has got a high price, right, a unit price, right, you are more likely to have an engagement with the point of sale and which is where the point of sale influence dramatically goes up. Unlike in FMCG, right, where you know 9.9 .9 times out of 10, right, the consumer is pretty much predetermined, right, I go to go and buy my good day, I will go and buy my good day and come back, hmm? yeah. You might still get influence, it is not as if the point of sale is not important, but the point is that relatively, right, the and therefore then the life, right, uh, in an FMCG is different from durables in the sense that one is that your reach is very important, someone mentioned it there, right, that you are available in all those points. So, if I am not available in this outlet out here, right, uh, you are not going to walk all the way down to the outside the campus, go to an outlet outside there, right, and go and get that one biscuit that you want to buy. You will buy whatever biscuit is available. If not biscuit, you will buy a chocolate. If not a chocolate, you will buy, you know, some other item, chips or whatever it is, right. Because the point is that you are not going to take that kind of pain and effort, right, to just simply stay <coughs> loyal to it. So, which is why, right, your reach is very critical, therefore the entire sales mechanisms that run as well as, as well as, right, it is not as if in durable sales is not important, right, but it is got a different aspect to it and I will talk about that, right. As well as the fact that how did I make sure that my brand was the one that he got predetermined with when he entered the outlet or he or she. Right. And therefore, then consumer and consumer marketing is very difficult, which is very, very important. Both these aspects are, are important, right, but there is a different nuance in the durable industry, right. So, when I am talking about FMCG, right, what will be important is that I will, the consumer does not interact much with the retailer. What is, what is, uh, how do you say, the only interaction that the consumer sees is when she sees how the product is displayed. 
right? There is trigger of recall that happens. So maybe I went there thinking that I wanted to buy a biscuit, but I saw such a beautiful display of the latest brand of chips, right? That I felt like trying it out. Because I remembered while I saw that display, right? That there was an ad that I had seen about one week back. And why don't I try this out? This is a new flavor, I need to try it out, right? So it's, as if, it's not as a point of sale is not important, but it's the way that nuance that happens. So first is reach is very critical. And the second one is basically in terms of how are you going to be displayed and stuff on that front. Uh, similarly on the marketing side, right? Uh, the marketing, uh, the nuance that will be there in terms of let's say an FMCG product will be more towards trying to make sure that that brand or that product gets into your consideration set, right? If it doesn't get in there, that's the success metric. If that, you know, obviously there's enough science and research that happens behind all ad campaigns that run, right? But effectively the output of that should be that has, one is that, is there a recall for that product, right? And the second one is that, am I likely to buy, right? Uh, Unlike in maybe let's say a durable area, right, where it might be there, you know, you might want to ensure that the consumer has understood the attributes of your product, has understood what are the USP, why is your TV better than some other's TV, right, so it's a far more rational kind of a conversation that would happen. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> not, not exactly very, uh, how do you say, a crystal clear boundary at times, because there will be times wherein a durable guy will run ads only to ensure that there is a, a completely, uh, how do I say, uh, uh, there is a completely irrational benefit that is to be seeded into the consumer's mind, right? And uh, anyone can think of an example like that? So high unit price, long life cycle, right? So the point is it's a planned purchase, right? But the company is, is bombarding or trying to make itself uh, Position on irrational benefit. Anyone think of that? In the, in the refrigerator, uh, this thing they came up with a particular this thing that you could use both the compartments for freezing your. That's items. a rational benefit. Apple. Pardon? Apple. Apple. Right. So that guy beyond a point is not talking of rational benefit. He's not talking that I'm cheaper, I'm this and that, whatever. He just said you gotta have me. Right? Okay. So, uh, so therefore then the sales and marketing life is very different in FMCG and which is why uh, one of the questions someone asked here, right, is that why is the person, uh, why is this thing about uh, that, you know, why do you have to go through sales before you do marketing? The reason being that that's, they go hand in hand, right? And uh, which is why that reach is equally and even more so important, doesn't apply only to FMCG, right? But the point is definitely in FMCG and which is why by rigor and most, uh, most companies, right, uh, which are worth the salt in India, right, uh, will ensure that a person uh, will go through a few years of sales and only post that gets into marketing. There's no, it's not as if there are no exceptions to it, right, there are enough and more exceptions to it. Right? But that's largely the right thing to do from the individual's point also, forget the, for the, forget the organization. Because that's when you exactly come to know what goes goes on the ground across these six million outlets, right? And therefore, what will be required for you to ensure, as in when you become an owner of a brand or you you know take up that kind of a role, right? That uh, uh, this is how I'll ensure that the product becomes a success. So, uh, so that's largely the rule. I think someone asked that question, right? And the reason being that basically, unless you are grounded on this front you will never be able to realize that what needs to be done to ensure the last mile success for your product as and when you become a brand manager, right? And there have been enough and more cases wherein a person was bright and creative enough, right? And he or she got into a role slightly earlier than normal, right? But simply remains too aloof from what happens on the ground. Because there's a huge machinery that runs in terms of trying to ensure that your product goes to about six to seven million outlets. There's a massive machinery that needs to ensure that. Right, because obviously it's not produced in six million factories, right? So it's produced in only a handful of factories. So how does it go from those handful of factories to six million outlets? Yeah, so there's a, there's a massive machinery that runs and unless you're able to understand how that runs, right, it's going to be uh, a little difficult for you to be successful as a brand manager. So that's how the, the rationale runs behind it. Yeah, right. 
the, the other thing is that, uh, so you know, uh, and it is not a one way move alone, right. So, there are, there have been, uh, the more and more successful cases that you will see, right, are people who have been in sales, have moved to marketing, have moved back into sales, right, and that is how you move zigzag across your career. What that does is that, uh, and obviously beyond a certain point, there are many other areas within an organization and a business model that you need to be aware of and exposed to, right? And that depends on many things. But the point is that that's something that makes sure that you, at all points in time, are able to understand a 360 degree view of how the business runs and makes you much better as a leader, you know, as in when you grow vertically in the organization. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, Indian FMCG versus MNCs. Uh, so, which are the Indian FMCGs? Hey, no memory. You just have to say it loudly. ITC, okay. Godrej, Patanjali, Dabar, Amul, Parle. Someone goofed up. Huh? Not too loudly. Lijjat Papad, okay. <laughs> right. And which are the MNCs? Colgate. HUL, Colgate, PNG, what is that? Racket Benkaiser, RB, okay. Pepsi, Mondelez. Coca-Cola, alright. So, in the last 10 years,